Hi, everyone. This is Amy Major with Spirit Rescue Talk again. I have a wonderful guest here who reached out to me. He is a psychic medium in the paranormal field. He is also a podcast host, which I know he really wants to talk about. His name is J.D. Hill. I'm really excited to have him on. So I'm going to introduce him now and have him talk a little bit about his history, his background, maybe some stories for you, and we'll get a little bit of really great information today. How are you doing today, Jay? I am doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. I'm very welcome to have you on. I did take a look at your background. You have a lot of great information. So tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Um, <clears throat> well, being who I am, um, I'm a psychic medium, but I wasn't always that way where I was that way, but I didn't recognize it until later in life. So um, go back to probably when I was uh, around nine or 10, I had a couple um, different instances where I would just sense different things and, and just be off on a lot of, on, on a few things. And I got to the point where when I was in my teenage years, I mean, I was going through adolescence and all that. And um, I actually saw my first full body apparition at a place where I used to live. And I, I knew that right then and there that that was probably going to follow me around why I wasn't quite sure. But as time went on, um, I would get flashes of pictures of, of images and certain things if I would hold something or go to a location and kind of like feel like you're beside yourself. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like that whole out of body experience. And so um, there's been a couple of times where I've, I, I experienced that, but kind of fast forward to when I was 42, which will be almost it was 10 years this year, um, I had a stroke and I used to drink a lot. I was basically running away from my gifts in, you know, who mm -hmm. I was. And so I, I used to drink a lot. And then once I, I had this stroke, it kind of put everything in perspective. And probably a year, a year or two after that, I started to really you know, embrace my gifts and I had quit drinking and I had, you know, changed my life around and I just kind of went into it headlong and probably the last four or five years, I've just kind of been leaps and bounds and just, you know, connecting with spirit and, you know, doing what I need to do and helping, you know, deceased, lo deceased, deceased loved ones or um, even, you know, people who are asking for help. And it's just, it's been rewarding, but it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of responsibility in that sense. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just I've always been this way, but it's just in the last 10 years is when my life changed, you know, where I actually accepted who I was instead of running away from who I was. So, yeah, we, I get a lot of reluctancy. I was very reluctant as well. Uh, the first, you know, 20 years of my life. What made you be, what made you run away from it? Was there anything in particular? I didn't, I, I didn't have a support group like I do now. You know what I mean? I, not too many people really talked about it. There were people that talked about it, but I couldn't really bring it to my family in that sense. I mean, I, I just kind of felt, I felt different and I just felt that there was something wrong with me and, you know, kids would joke, you know, all oh, that's, um, you're going insane or, you know, I mean, it's just kind of like, I don't want to be that, you know, I don't want to do that. And then I realized after, you know, I would experience it more. And when I got more into the paranormal, I was more accepting of who I was, but I was still running from who I was, you know what I mean? And I just, I would have clarity, moments of clarity where I just, I knew what it was. I knew that it, you know, it always was around me. Paranormal was always around me. Spirits were always around me. And I just, I, there's times where I, I had clarity and I, I, you know, I interact with spirits and this and that, but then there were times where I would retreat and, you know, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't want to, so. When you connect with spirits, do you find that you connect more to those that have crossed over? Do you find that you connect more to earthbound spirits? Um, they kind of come to me, you know, I mean, if, if, if somebody is wanting to talk to a loved one or something like that, and it, it, if spirit puts it on my radar, I'll have visions or thoughts or 
names or words or sounds um, anywhere from two weeks before to a week before to a couple days before or moments. I mean, it just depends. So I, I did a reading for somebody and I had gotten most of the information a week before and my, I, I logged it in and, and then when I sat down with this woman and I knew because all those thoughts and visions came back to me immediately. So that's just the way I, I kind of handle it. Um, there would be times where I'll get visions where I'll get pictures of people and this and that, and I won't know what to do with them because I'll have to contact somebody that I think I, I may be involved with. Like I have a camera guy that, that I work with that does um, paranormal investigations and stuff. And he was working on getting places to do psychic walkthroughs and then where he would, where he would document it and stuff like that. So um, if I would get visions or get thoughts like that beforehand, I would contact him and say, are you working on something? And he'd be like, yeah. And then I would tell him what I, what I would see. And he says, yeah, you're right on track. You're working with me. I'm like, okay. You know, so that's how I kind of did it. I had an instant where I was interviewing on my podcast. I was interviewing a group of people that had a TV show um, that they didn't have the TV show anymore, but I was, I contacted them when I found their show on, on Hulu. And so I talked to them. I talked to one of the guys there and I called him on the phone and talked to him for about a couple hours and then set everything up. And, um, like a couple of days before I got all these visions of, of a female and what she was wearing and who she was with and how she died and the whole nine yards. And it was really scary because I don't do like murder cases. You know, I don't, I just, it, it kind of freaked me out. Well, I didn't understand what that actually meant. And then I had seen my last vision was of my friend, David, uh, that's with this show and I was going to interview him and I thought okay that's evidently who I need to talk to so I called him and talked to him and I explained to him the situation and I said I had a, a vision of being underwater in a pool and I see the building behind it and it's a two-tier hotel old wood and the whole nine yards and and so he said oh wait a minute and so he sent me a picture and it was of the old Bonnie Springs in Las Vegas or, or in Nevada. And it had the swimming pool with the hotel. And there was, you know, the trees weren't there at that time. So this was years ago. And she was on, this lady was underwater. She had ever really drowned or something happened where I looked through her eyes up through the water and I've never done that. And that kind of freaked me out, but he validated everything that I, I was, you know, going through with that. And he said, and after I talked to him, all the visions stopped. They just quit. And then I never really thought about it again. I was like, okay, what was, there was a reason why I had, but then I had understood that it was this girl, I do believe was murdered there and, or something happened. And, you know, she wanted her story told. And that's what a lot of them do. A lot of them want their story to be told in that sense, you know? So, yeah, that was, well, that was probably, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, so that was, that was one of them. You, you know, yeah. if you're, you're linked into someone who's doing right. an investigation already, they're right. going to go to you because you're the medium. You're the, you're right. the closest link closest to link. whoever. Right. So they're right. going to go to you for you to be the channel, to be the medium, to be mm -hmm. the, the message bearer yep. so that they can find their closure. Yeah, I have gone through that a couple different times, quite a few actually, and especially when I go to uh, old locations, old buildings, you know, spirits that, that some of them that are still there. What a lot of people don't realize too is that um, – Spirits, spirits are everywhere, but it, they're not as much as people think. You know, I mean, some people, some spirits cross over pretty quickly, but mm -hmm. then there's some that just, I would say that there's not a handful, but I would say that's 
not as much as people you know think. And I run into that a lot saying, oh, you know, somebody died, they got to be hanging out. It's like, not necessarily. <laughs> and so I run into that with some people in the paranormal field quite a bit. And, and I said, I'll be able to tell you if they're here or if they've crossed, you know, and I've had to tell a couple people, like, yeah, that person's not here. It's they're crossed. No, I know that they're here. I'm like, I'm telling you, they're not, you know, but they don't listen to that. They, they, they just want the evidence and they, you know, and to each his own, you know, Hey, do what you got to do, you know, but. Well, you know, you can also run into residual imprints that can mimic. Right. Right. A lot of people think that right. that's a spirit or you yep. can have a visitation from yep. someone who has crossed over right. because they're, right. you know, all of a sudden someone's investigating their space where they died. Right. It right. sends a little bit of a link to the spirit on the other side. So they're coming in. And I was like, right. I was like, right. they're eating popcorn, sitting there right. watching the right. show. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're going to feel that energy and that spirit. Right, of course, right. Right, 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 right. So. And there's some that do come back, too. There's some that have crossed and then come back to visit. I mean, that's just, oh, yeah. I don't know how it works like that, but I, I do know a couple places that do that, you know, so. I tell people the majority of the spirit activity that they sense are visiting spirits that have crossed over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, they're coming back as guides, mm-hmm. as mentors, as teachers, as trainers. They're coming back to help those of us that are still here, boots on the ground. We're still right. in the body. We're still doing the work down here. So mm-hmm. a lot of spirits mm-hmm. are going to come in and visit. Just hang out. Right. They're going to sit there in their favorite chair and be like, yep, how you doing? Right. It doesn't right. mean that they're earthbound. It, right. you know, and I always tell people, pay attention to what the spirit's intentions are. Right. Because if a spirit wants to give you something such as love, encouragement, growth, they want to mm-hmm. give you a warm hug, they're most likely crossed over. Mm-hmm. If they're mm-hmm. needing something from you, they're needing help. They're needing a voice. They're needing someone to help them into life. They're earthbound because they need something. Right. More right. I agree. I agree 100%. Yep. Yep. So how can you tell the difference if it's residual or possibly an earthbound spirit that you've connected to? Uh, it's just with me, it's just, a, it's just a knowing I see it, you know, I see basically, um, if they're, if they've already crossed over, I'll automatically, I'll see them on, it's like being on the other side of a wall. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the light is there and I could, it's almost like I see the moment that they are, they cross over or at that time when they passed away, mm-hmm. I can look at them and I can say, yep, that person crossed. I, like I'm seeing a replay of them walking through that. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. And then there's ones where I have to look a little deeper and say, okay, I'm looking for that reel of them walking through to the other side, to the, to the light. You know what I mean? And if I don't get that, if I don't find that, that reel, I, then there's, they're still here. Mm-hmm. And there are some that I know that are here for, <laughs> certain reasons the majority of the ones that i run into even if they don't interact i just i automatically know um it's guilt a lot of it is guilt i run into a lot of people a lot of spirits who are or feel that guilt and they they feel they fear for retribution for wanting to cross over they're afraid to you know it's it's just they don't they would rather wallow in their sorrow basically you know and blame themselves instead Mm -hmm. of trusting trusting the spirits around them that are trying to help them cross over Mm -hmm. and it's almost like that they don't hear them because they're so consumed with that guilt and that that angst that it kind of like overshadows them it's like somebody puts a pair of headphones on them and they can't hear it you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. so i run into that quite a bit a lot of it's guilt and I, you know, am respectful with them. And I've run into some that in some places that have done some bad things, but I tell them, I'm not here to judge. You're not here anymore. You're deceased. I don't judge right. you. You're not on this plane. You know, that is irrelevant. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just here to help you if you will accept my help. But it, some of them don't. Some of them just like, yeah, no, whatever. You know, don't, don't help me. I don't want your help, you know, and so we come across that a lot. Yeah. 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 So I give them the respect of, okay, I'll give you space. 
you know, if right. you need something, but I always try to let them know or let spirit know to let them know that if they need help with something that they can come to me, which I've had happen before too, you know, and I've also had ones that don't like me because the fact that they could see my light and they know who I am. And then they, they have their own agenda. Mm. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I got a couple gangsters that I work with, <laughs> You know, I work in an old building and right. they were there for a while and one of them's really tall and one of them's really short and the guy's named Shorty mm. and he's not very nice, but I give him the space and I respect him. You know what I mean? If I come across their space in some way, they're quick to let me know, you know, mm. so I just, and somebody, some people say, you know, how can you deal with all that? You know, how can you, it's just. I don't, you just do. If you, if you're, yeah, if you're wired to do that, mm -hmm. then that's just, it's a normalcy for you. You know right. what I mean? It's, that's just, you just accept what it is. Mm -hmm. People think I'm crazy. I'm like, no, I know I'm not crazy. So. <laughs> no, but, you're yeah. definitely not. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I know the hard part that a lot of people ask me, especially I train internationally. The one of the biggest questions I get is why do you try to to you know <clears throat> force these spirits into the light? And, and you know, of course, we don't force any no, spirit into no, the light. That's no. sort of a, a a sort of an understanding a lot of people have. It's like why mm -hmm. do you force these spirits into light? Why do you coerce them? And like, never once in my career did I ever say that we force spirits into the light. Right, but we right. do try to acknowledge. That they're in a limited reality. They're in a yeah. limited amount of consciousness. And right. in that consciousness, they have a very <clears throat> limited amount of information, such mm -hmm. as they're not aware of their soul journey. They're not aware of their continuation of their existence past the reality of their life mm -hmm. in this one moment. There, <clears throat> there's an existence beyond their pain and suffering at that mm -hmm. moment right now. So for the, a lot of the people that ask me, like, why do you try to get these spirits to cross over? And my answer is, well, when you see a spirit in pain, don't you want to help? Don't mm -hmm. you want to say something? Don't you want to counsel to have them pulled out of that controlled reality that they're right. creating right. themselves and get them to have a different awareness of their mm -hmm. situation? That's what our jobs really, really is. It's not to cross them or here to change their awareness. It's an so encouragement. All the options. Yeah, exactly. Total, total encouragement, you know. So it's not trying to force anybody, you know. And yeah. I kind of ran into that too, you know. But it's, right. it's, a, it's about just encouraging them to do what's best for them. Mm -hmm. and, and I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, well, you really should just leave these spirits be because they're not they're not harming anyone. And, 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 to a certain extent, I agree with that because mm -hmm. if they're not ready to go, sure, let them be. But after a certain amount of time, it does halt their evolution, mm -hmm. their ascension, their growth, mm -hmm. their, their learning, all the wisdom that these souls can acclimate through the lifetimes and through the experiences, these souls are going to miss out on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, do you ever get to a point where you try to be a little bit more assertive with these spirits because you know they've been around for quite a long time and you know it's probably time for them to start thinking about getting over to the other side yeah yeah i've i've ran into a couple like that um i just try to explain it to them in a way where they try to understand it because there's sometimes that they just do not want to hear any of it and they are so set it's kind of like I use analogies a lot. So I, I, I picture like a spirit that's been earthbound for a very long time. It's almost like standing in quicksand. They've accepted the fact that they're stuck. They've accepted the fact that they're not going to really do anything. But the little things that they do do is they just they either can try to run havoc or they can just try to get people's attention. You know, it's just they're just they just feel that they they're limited to what they, they can do. Then there's other ones that force themselves to accept. I can do, you know, they start trying to imagine they can do things more. They can, you know, create themselves more to be what they are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, the negative energy that they have 
can produce that in that spiritual sense. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like if they sense if they're around another a place where it's got a lot of negativity or hatred or anger, that emotion can also transcend to the other side. And so they they can latch onto that and that can make them I wouldn't say more powerful, but they it gives them a little bit more options. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that they're not so stuck. Because mm-hmm. I ran in I ran into a couple that that shouldn't be able to do what some of them do. And they say, Oh, that's, that's a demon or that's just, it's like, I have to tell people it's, it's not everything's a demon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. it could be a spirit that's a, a little bit advanced and, and gotten a little bit better with being earthbound. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just kind of try to relay that message to them, but yeah, I've ran into, quite a few different ones. I don't really run into anything negative. I did an event, uh, an investigation um, up north of where I live in Wisconsin. And it was an old, old building. And that was probably around the times of the prohibition. Um, Mm -hmm. They had a lot of uh, activity, uh, like gangster activity in this net. I didn't know that. I was going up there to investigate the paranormal with another person. And as soon as I pulled up in front of this building, <clears throat> excuse me, I was getting berated by foul language, by who are you? What are you doing here? And I was in the car, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, who is this? Well, I had called another friend of mine who was another medium. And I said, I've got this issue you know, I said, I don't really kind of know how to handle it. And this was really on when I was really starting to accept my gifts and this and that. And she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is yelling at you? She could hear it on the phone. And then she realized, oh, that's who that is. Because she had been at this location before. Mm. And so she knew who it was, knew his name. And yeah, it was just, that was something I had not experienced before. But as of late, I've also experienced that where I've kind of been, where a spirit would come up to you who needs help or is angry, will get right in your face. I don't know if you've ever had that happen where you've had oh, a spirit. Yes. Oh, I mean, get in your face oh. and you're, and, and you have to, even though nobody can see this person, you could sense and see them with your mind. You can see them. You have to step back and you have to step back and, and I've had spirits do that. And that is unsettling in a, in a way because you're not expecting that. You know what I mean? So don't bother me. <laughs> After a while, it just well, it, bother. it's it, it's happened it happened a couple of times when I got out of my car at a place uh, where I was doing my podcast, and mm-hmm. it was a haunted location. But um, the lady would come running across the street and be up in my grill, like you got to help me, and she was angry, and she was this, and then basically spirit had to kind of intercede and say just wait wait you know back up and because I was doing something completely different and I I needed to do something completely different then I eventually I reached out you know I contacted with this young girl found out her story what happened and all this other stuff and I and she was so angry and I said explain to her it's time to cross you know this isn't doing you any good here and because the person that she was involved with was still there and he's still there and he's not the nicest guy and I know his name but out of respect I won't tell anybody his name I've known what he I knew what he did and I I just I had that respect you know what I mean it, the, mm-hmm. the rules the rules of engagement for people don't apply on the same as living as it is the deceased when it comes to like judgment and all that stuff it doesn't matter you know the right. person the person is gone There's nothing to be gained over here by causing, you know, angry words or um, judgment or anything like that, you know, or it's just, your goal is to try to help that person, you know, try to help that person cross. And that's the bottom line. So you mentioned that spirit had come in and intervened in your uh, exchange with this woman. Explain a little bit about who that was. I know exactly who that was. That was that was that was my guide. That is one of my guides who is actually my grandmother. 
my 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 mom's mom because mm -hmm. when I was and I didn't realize that that could actually happen and I had I've had my guides you know for a long time my grandmother held me when she was on her deathbed when I was born so she I was only two three months old and then she passed away mm -hmm. And so um, there was another lady, uh, a friend of mine who's a medium, and she said, you don't know who your, the name of your guide is. And I said, I don't. She goes, but you do. And then she, she said, I need you to meet Gladys. And I said, what? And, that, and then I could see my grandmother, my guide, raising her hands going, surprise. You know, and then I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Makes sense. You know, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, no, she's interceded with, you know, she's kind of stepped in between me a couple of times. If, if something is going on in that sense, I've, she's always looked over. You know. Sounds like a protector. Very much so. And my mother is there too, but my mother is always in the back sitting on a chair, but she's not there all the time. She right. disappears every once in a while. And like my father, I've only seen him once. My dad died when I was 18. Um, and that's part of, that's where I think I get my gifts from. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's, he was always in his head, kind of like I am. And yeah, he, uh, I, I wanted to find out, I, I was, ne I've never interacted with him after he passed, except for once or twice. But from what I'm told is that he is still learning and so he's on the other side with whatever class or whatever he's got going on he's got things that he has to do and that's just the way the way it is i mean it's it's just really weird how that works you know when somebody passes that you were really close to or a family member or something with me i usually know that they're over right away and i kind of know what they got to do you know hmm. and that's kind of cool but it's very yeah. cool yeah. Because it's like you have a intuitive knowing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of the the mission, the contracts, the connections, the sign yep. rooms. Yeah. And and yep. no one needs to tell you what they are. You just know. Yeah. What they are. Just like when you meet someone, you know, mm -hmm. you know them. You know you've had previous right. encounters, other lifetimes with them. You know that you know them on the other side. Yeah. But there's there's nothing there to say oh yeah we know each other before it's just one of those glances of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i know you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah when you know you know you know yeah. <laughs> so yeah and I, I find the older souls are the protectors mm -hmm. you know the guides because we do have guides we have master guides we have angels we have teachers, we have mentors, we have protectors, and then you have your ancestor guides. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, specifically, if an ancestor guide is in your soul group, they're going to be like the head on show. They're going to be the ones coming and saying, everybody step back. Right, this right. This is my guy. Right. This is right. who I'm working yeah. with. It sounds like that's what your grandmother did. Sounds like she's pretty. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the whole thing. Um, a lot of the friends that I have who are mediums that I'm meeting, that I would meet for the first time or whatever, um, they a lot of them would, would just like, I got to tell you, you have a lot of protection around you. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's amazing how much you have. And I'm like, that, that's great. Okay. Well, then I, I knew that I know my guys. I know the angels. I had two uh, guardians or two or, yeah, two, two or two guardians. And they're mm -hmm. hooded figures. I don't know. I, they don't interact with me, but I know that they're there, you know, but there's also, I know that I come from a, a line of, a, an angelic line. I know I do. I was told that. I discovered that. I came from the Levi tribe um, eons ago, and I also had a medium tell me that uh, you have been on every, been, been on every single major earth earth event the way she described it no oh, you like showing up for the show huh yeah i guess <laughs> um, like, i want to be involved in everything right <laughs> you know yeah. so so yeah i mean i just i take comfort in knowing that you know i've accepted more so who i am instead of you know like i used to run away from it and 
you know, it's just one of those things where it's taken me 50, going to be 52 years, you know, <laughs> to, to realize, you know, I am who I am. Right. And well, not, some of not, us start early. Some of us start late. It doesn't matter true. as long as we do the work. That's right. That's right. And somebody else said to me too, I was talking to her and she's not a medium. She's just a, a, a person I had ran into. And I was telling her about some of the stuff that I do in my show. And she said, she said, you want to just help everybody. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I said, I have that mentality that I would like, if I could save everybody or help everybody, I would. Mm. Just because I just have that in me, you know, to help whoever I can. Right. For sure. Now you said you work a lot with the paranormal teams. How did you get involved in that? Since they had been following me around since I was little and, and inadvertently I would, you know, do short investigations and this and that, you know, years ago. And then um, after my stroke, I, I wanted to get into, I wanted to do something that meant, that meant something. And I started a paranormal team and called Wisconsin Paranormal Research. And I had some some people on it that was okay. And it was good. And we didn't really do too many investigations because when COVID hit and so we were kind of like out. And But there again, then I, I didn't feel that I was doing what I was supposed to. It was kind of like somebody telling you, you're so close, but you're kind of missing the mark. Mm -hmm. you know and so I was like okay I like doing investigations but then once I got more into my mediumship and start discovering who I was and this, I kind of got steered in that direction I could still do the investigations and this and that but my focus is my mediumship and my helping people and this and that so not that I let my paranormal team go on the wayside but um, they moved away and I have one person left and he's my camera guy and we do stuff in our, you know every once in a while and so I just now mostly focus on my podcast and my mediumship and you know that's kind of about it you know I love to do investigations don't get me wrong but I really like to do psychic walkthroughs to help people you know if they don't understand what's in the building or whatever I can tell them yeah and so that you know they can be instructed to handle it accordingly you know what I mean and that's it's, the thing when you're a medium you don't necessarily need to investigate need to go just explore right Lincoln right yeah <laughs> I had to learn that too that I don't really need to you know investigate even though I do like to investigate with other people but it's also that they they get that validation as well as I do you know working with a researcher and have somebody said yeah that's right or that's true it's written right here you know and so they, it kind of helps them with their evidence and you know and it's, it's kind of a whole mindset, you know? Hmm. The bottom line is, if you're gonna help somebody, help somebody. And right. my personal opinion is, you know, there are teams that do just investigate just to get their evidence and just to get that, that wow moment. Hmm. But I have to ask them that, why are you doing it? Are you doing it to help somebody or are you doing it just to, to satisfy your, your need to be scared or to, you know, people can do it as a hobby, but if you seriously are going to be stirring things up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you should probably have somebody with you that can help clean it up. I love that. Yeah, that's great. I, well, you know, and I, I feel the same way. Maybe I'm just judgmental as a medium, as a rescue yeah. medium, because our jobs are to come in and provide counsel. Mm -hmm. help to the spirits where a lot of the paranormal teams come in just for the entertainment purpose of it right it's right. like oh there's a ghost and they're right. like wait are you going to do anything about it and a lot of teams don't know how so right. a lot of rescue mediums are joining these teams mm -hmm. because, yeah and that's the way it should be it yeah and that's the way it should be you know I, I just think that you should have at least a medium or a rescue medium on your team hands yeah. down you know what right. i mean i mean seriously because you want to be able to fix what you're doing or, you know, if there's something broke or if there's something wrong, you know, I mean, the team can go in there and investigate. And if the spirit's trying to yell at somebody or talk to somebody, 
but the person that you're trying to do can't hear you, and all mm-hmm. they're doing is waving their arms, going, "This these people can't hear us." You know, they're they're not gonna. All they want is for us to rap on the wall, and all they want for us to do is, you know, make this noise. And it's like you gotta. And I tell paranormal investigators, think outside the box. You know, I mean, it's just. Antagonizing oh. spirits for the glorification yeah. of getting those results probably isn't the most moral thing to do. I think a lot right. of people forget that these are actually people. Mm-hmm. Right. That are, that are out of right, body. right. Right. And I've had to remind people that before. You know, these were once a living person. Show them mm-hmm. some respect. Right. You know? Right. So. I, I think it's changing, though. I really do. Because, you know, when I started my rescue work 25 years ago, Everything was paranormal. Nobody really talked about because, you know, working with earthbound spirits or ghosts, everything was paranormal. Nobody right. talked about being it spiritual. There was either the spiritual community or paranormal community. There was nothing in between. Right, right, back then. right. And I think we're really bridging that gap between spiritual and paranormal more than we have before mm-hmm. with the type of mediumship that we're doing, working more hand in hand not calling it ghost hunting but more investigative work maybe spiritual investigations or because it's like i understand that earthbound spirits have been placed in the category of paranormal Mm -hmm. i don't think they should be i i think they should be considered spiritual just as much as a spirit that's crossed over a -hmm. spirit is a spirit one way or another it's just depending on the vibrational frequency that they decide to reside in that's that's the only difference so i think with more education and more people like you, uh, getting on and speaking about your experiences and educating the public mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. what it really is and, and not leave that, not allow, uh, you know, Hollywood or the media to, to train uh, the public on earthbound spirits and spirit. We right. need to speak up more. We need to say yep. more. Mm-hmm, we need to be able mm-hmm. to help people understand that connection between right, right, the right. and people. And not that's what it is. And that's what it is, is the, is the connections, the transfer of energies and frequencies. And a lot of, right. I talk about frequencies all the time. Yeah. You know, if you, if you go to a location and the frequency, you don't find anything or you don't get any EVPs or you don't, you know, sense anything or your investigators don't find anything. The frequency wasn't there. It hmm. doesn't have, it doesn't happen just because you showed up. Right. You know, and it depends on the energy that the person is going in there to investigate or their intent. Hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? If their intent is garbage, you know, I mean, if their intent is just to cause trouble, that's that's what you're going to get. You know. Well, also, a lot of these paranormal teams don't realize that some earthbound spirits go into what we call a pause or a rest state. Yeah. So they actually bring their energy back in and mm-hmm. they go into a state of just sleeping where they're yeah. not they're not yep. looking around they're not engaging yep. in their i've seen that process. a couple different times and wondering what are they doing why are right. they just sitting there this well, I, I, I didn't know that before now so now i know <laughs> well that's why it's great to have a medium step in because a medium is like a lighthouse mm-hmm. they come in they shine a light they stir up the energy the weight right the right, off. right. Like, oh by the way do you know that you're still here so right. you know that you're right. still in the earth right. Right. so a lot of paranormal teams are using mediums just to stir up the energy just to get the earthbound spirit to wake up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as well yeah there's been times where i've gone into places and i've noticed i'm like yeah i see spirits here but they're not doing anything no and it just depends on they're kind of like there's a reason you know i mean it, it's mm-hmm. just i don't know i just i always say that the frequency is everything there's so many the way the way the world and the earth is now and the energy around the earth and all that things are changing and shifting mm-hmm. and people who are gifted like that will feel <clears throat> can feel dizzy can feel sick to their stomach can feel angst can feel you know and and if they wonder you know what's going on why am i feeling this way if you're gifted and you realize that you pretty much know right away okay things are just shifting i need to roll with it i had that mm-hmm. yesterday yeah. Yeah, I had that yesterday. I was sitting outside and I went to, and I wasn't um, for like a couple minutes. And then I got up and I felt like my whole right leg was a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. I felt off kilter. And I was like, I've only had that happen probably three or four times in my lifetime. And, Mm -hmm. but that time I was just like, and I knew right away, I'm like, oh, it's a shift. There's a, 
some type of frequency shift, something's going on. Mm. And then I felt fine, you know, and somebody would think, is there something wrong with me? Do I need to go to the hospital? Or, you know, I just know that that what it was, you know, you I just, the yeah, the difference. Yeah. You know, so. So you said but, you yeah. do a podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Yeah. Um, I am the host of Studio Six Paranormal Entertainment, mm -hmm. and I do podcasts, and I kind of bring awareness to um, the paranormal field, and I try to have people on my show who want to share their experiences as well as trying to educate people on certain things, like the way we were talking earlier. You know, I mean, it's kind of like want to get that, that message out there for other people to be able to interact, you know, and um, see a different side of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, my co-host is 80% paranormal, but he's also 20% skeptic because he's a, he's a scientist and we're like the yin and yang, you know, and, and, it, and it works. So, um, yeah, I just, I like to talk like-minded people, but I also want to be able to interact with people in a way where, um, kind of leaves an impression of positivity. You know, and, and in, in that sense, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do a podcast is because of the fact that I wanted to kind of bring that positivity out to people, especially in the paranormal, you know, so. Well, that's true um, because, you know, the uh, the whole genre of paranormal, you know, everyone wearing, everyone wearing black, everything being dark, everything right, being right. spooky and scary. I'm like, what are, what are they trying to, what message are trying to give off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wondered about that too. Um, I like a lot of it is is personal choice, and it's just that whole mystique of that. Mm -hmm. But I really, in my in, in my eyes, it's kind of like if you're going to be in the paranormal, why not be as bright as you can? <laughs> you know, and that's like just it. the that's the way I look at it. But you know, to each his own, and not to you yeah. know talk bad about anybody that wears dark colors or nothing like that but i'm always wearing black yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that's yeah that's <laughs> my daughter's favorite color is black so but yeah so it, it's just one of those things where you know reaching people and talking with people and just getting people to think mm -hmm. you know what could or this or that but <clears throat> i had a person a, a person on my show uh recently that was talking about provoking and how he used to provoke and that was a hard pill for me to swallow because I don't agree with that and I basically had to explain it to him yeah we don't do that this is why you shouldn't do it you know but I wasn't berating him I wasn't mean to him I wasn't you know what I mean he was my guest you know so I was just expressing in a way that he understood and he had said some things that he agreed with and he's like yeah you know that's I, if i got him to kind of think a little bit differently then that's what i did you know what i mean you know so well so, spirit yeah. obviously brought him to you yeah because you needed to be you know mm -hmm. there to help inspire mm -hmm. him and it's yeah. all awareness it's all you know i don't right. think anyone really has right. an intention to harm right. yeah it's just that's all they know life lessons it's yeah. really <laughs> and that book's that book's way too big oh yeah. Yeah. so how can people find you if they want to reach out to connect um people can find me on pretty much every platform so my show is my show studio six paranormal entertainment is on iHeartRadio, radio spotify youtube Oh my goodness. Samsung Podcasts, Google wow. Podcasts, um, Deezer Podcasts, um, uh, Bean Pod Podcasts, and um, I'm also on Twitter and um, Instagram as well. Wow. And it's all Studio 6 Paranormal Entertainment. And then I have uh, my YouTube, I think I have 50 episodes. And then I have uh, a hand, couple handfuls, so maybe a handful on my other ones. So, so has anyone ever given you the message that you're going to eventually transition from podcast to media, and possibly YouTube or television? Um, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, 
Yeah. I've always said that I would love to get paid for what I'd love to do. I love my podcast. You know what I mean? If I could get paid to do it, that'd be great. But as far as I, 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 I have an idea for a show that I had just kind of put out there mm-hmm. and it's, it's having to do with like being a rescue medium and it's a really great idea and it, it's about helping and it's just, but it's not about the shows that some of the shows that are on today. It's, it's something completely different. And somebody, I, I, yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. and I said that to a friend of mine and he said, well, where's the hook? And I said, the truth, <laughs> you know, this is, well, they usually want this person to act like this, or this person. I said, if this, if, if the company that's trying to get a new TV show and all they see are dollar signs, <clears throat> then they're in it for the wrong reasons. Right. If there's a person that feels like this, is something that I believe in, or I feel like this could actually work. And your intentions are everything. If you don't have good intentions, you're going to be going along down a lot of dead dead end roads. That's just my opinion. I always say, don't worry about getting a producer because you can create your own show, throw it up on YouTube, you get a following. You don't have to wait for someone to come in and take control. Over right. your creative thoughts and your ideas, and right, right. the way that you truly want to express yourself mm-hmm. through the show, Don't right, right, grab it and control it, right, yeah. And and I thought about that too, you know. And I thought about this is something, this is an idea that I've had that that I know that is spirit led because of who I am and and how I want to be able to help and interact. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, it's just think about it. I just yeah. see a group of people, more than you, a group of people all collaborating together on yeah. a really great project. So just right. a lot of it has to do with <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with financial back. I mean, that's just well, that's why you need a lot of people. If everybody throws a little yeah. bit in the pot. Right. That's right. So bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Spirit will find a way. But yeah, I'm I'm really kind of just things are moving and I know things are moving and things are changing and I'm, I'm going into something and I know it's coming and I don't really know. I'm not privy to all that information yet, but I just have to trust spirit that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Well, yeah. keep speaking up because there's a lot of people that want to listen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And it's been a here. real pleasure. And I thank you so much for having me. So. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in with us today. I know we learned a lot. Uh, if you do decide to work with paranormal teams, please show off your wonderful mediumship ability and help those spirits in the light. They're not ready to go. Find a place of rest. Give them a little bit of things to think about, things to, to you know, weigh on and give them an excuse to get back over to the other side because that's where they belong. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today and we will see you next time. Bye.